Okay. Well, this is part two of our off-grid solar well and Wi-Fi station. <laughs> This, uh, this is the mounting bracket for the solar panels. <clears throat> and it's about as tall as my eyes. <clears throat> so there will be a post, which is sitting over there on the saw horse, that will rest in two saddle, they'll rest here in two saddle-like U-bolt um, frames. And then we'll stretch across like this. That uh, pipe is 15 feet. It's enough to accommodate four large solar panels. This system is uh, provided by a company called Sunrack, or this is called a Sunrack, provided by a company called GenPro. I'll tell you about it. Some of you may have heard of a YouTube channel called Engineer775. It's one of my favorite channels. Uh, he's uh, somebody who really helped me understand things like solar power, and uh, off-grid and emergency preparedness type systems for you know your property. Uh, I purchased this GenPro Sunrack system through Engineer 775. Uh, he's got a website, you know, a store where he sells these things, and uh, so I purchased the uh, GenPro Sunrack, and I also purchased four solar panels through him, uh, and uh, you know some things for the. Uh, Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, for the solar-powered well. Um, I purchased the well pump and the well pump controllers, uh, the four-pole switch, and, uh, you know, the lightning arresters, those kinds of things. Anyway, I uh, had a very good experience with him. Um, I don't believe he's the cheapest you can find, but his expertise uh, and know-how on this stuff is second to none, if you ask me. Um, so... Uh, you know, so I decided to uh, patronize his company and buy through him. Anyway, the system here is composed of these saddles and U-bolts, which will hold that large pipe in place, as well as these aluminum uh, racks, which will hold the solar panels. Then, instead of bolting the solar panels in, which I think is, this is really cool part that I like, and makes installation of this thing so fast, you use these clips instead, and you just sort of tap them into place. Uh, they tap over this and the solar panel uh, to sort of hold it in place in a couple of spots, and it makes it very tight, windproof, and safe. If you install it right, you can get a post like this, a four and a half inch you know, diameter post if you sink it right into the ground and cement it in properly and you know, make sure it's deep enough. You can get a post like this to support, I think, like six or eight, maybe even 12 solar panels just on one or two of those posts over there, cross beams. Uh, right now, my job is to tighten uh, and install this mounting uh, bracket here. Right above my finger, there's a section of road that runs off. And I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but beyond that, there's a tiny hill, a tiny steep hill away off in the distance that it points just to the left of. That is due south for us. So I need to make sure this panel rack system is lined up with that. It's just an easier way than breaking out the compass. And, you know, if I'm off a degree or two, big deal on the solar panels. So here we go. Wait. There. All right, so we have to screw some bolts into here. But just to make sure we don't lose our way while we're doing that, I'm gonna mark a line on this so that it, in case it gets moved, we can line it back up. All right, okay, so the owner's manual says to torque these bolts at 23 feet, six inches, um, basically 24 foot pounds. Torque, by the way, <coughs> is the amount of force required to turn an object around an axis 
in this case at one foot away from the center of that object. So in this case the center of the bolt, 24 foot pounds would mean that I have to tighten this, I have to use a force of 24 pounds against this bolt at a point one foot away from the center of the bolt and when I get it there this uh, this wrench will click and let me know that I've applied the correct amount of force. There's 10 pounds and there's 20 and one, two, three, four pounds. Okay. So I set this at 24 pounds of torque. I've already tightened these, so I may already be there. It'll click and let me know. Hear the click? I'll do it again. Ready? Mm-hmm. Click. That lets me know I'm there. Don't go any further than that. Can you hear the cranes? I don't know if I trust the instructions on this because this is a bigger bolt than they describe in the instructions. And normally, you know, the bigger the bolt, the higher the torque, but I'm going to trust it for now. Uh, just leave it. Of course, I'll come back to this in about you know, two weeks or something like that after, after we've had some good winds and I'll check this torque, retorque them, make sure they're stay, they've stayed nice and tight. Okay, next thing to do would be to cut a couple saddles up here and then that pipe. This Sunrack system is supposed to be able to design, uh, is designed to be able to handle something like hurricane force winds, which is important to us here at Contemi because we get some really high winds. Max gust, 90 miles an hour. Yeah, in the spring. So, you know, it's important that we got something that's, you know, that can not only handle the weight of all these panels, but also handle the wind forces that we get. Um, <clears throat> you saw in prior videos on this that we sank this pole quite a few feet down, and it is really cemented in well. When you sink this pole, you need to make sure that it is sitting in the bottom of the hole. Because if you don't, when you put all this weight on top of it, and keep in mind that that pole over there is over 100 pounds just by itself. And then you've got a couple of hundred pounds of solar panels on top of that. I mean, over time, it could cause this to sink and, uh, you know, settle wrongly and stuff like that. So you got to make sure the pole is in the ground all the way down, cemented in well and deep. In this case, this pole is about half of its depth in the ground. tightening u-bolts you want to make sure that you're tightening them evenly that means you want the same amount of thread on either side so just go to one side for a few turns and then come back to the other make sure they're the same to provide even tension otherwise you could get a case where it could snap um, this is an 11 16 nut this is a three-quarter bolt those are the only two tools you're going to need for this uh, besides you know uh, and then, of course, you're going to need the four and a half inch pipe for the cross beam and for the post, some cement. And uh, from this point forward, I don't think there are any other tools. Yeah, there aren't any other tools except maybe a, a hammer to tap some stuff in. Okay, so there it is. Pole installed. As you can see, we got a little bit of wiggle. That's okay. It's made, it should be made to do that. That's fine. We want it to give a little bit. So here we have one of the uh, brackets that holds the solar panel. You can see another saddle and U-bolt that fits inside this channel, which is centered. And of course, that beam will pass through here. And then this will be the part that shows right here. And the solar panels will simply rest in these little channels or rabbits. And then they'll be clipped on. We'll show you how that goes. So far, this is going together pretty easy, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Robert did an excellent job of painting this post while I was gone today. And we got our first... Uh, Pan, uh, module uh, rack uh, piece in centered on the post since we have four panels so there'll be two from going this direction two going that direction and then we'll have a little bit of pipe left over on the ends <clears throat> but 
our modules, our solar panels, our modules they're called, are 39 inches wide. So we need to measure from here 39 inches to the inside of the next one. Then place it. And then the last one down on the end. And we need to make sure that all of these are in the same plane uh, because for seasonal adjustment, you would loosen these U-bolts here that manage the, pan the, um, the cross beam. And then you would simply move the panels, you know, tilt the panels how you want and the entire beam with the panels will turn. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, to avoid having to do that all the time, I'm going to do a compromise and I will just set this for our latitude, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, we're at 37 degrees north. Okay, I'm using <clears throat> Robert's cell phone. We have a little angle finder on here. And they're not perfect, but I mean, they're close enough. Uh, rest it against this angle right here and it shows me I'm at between 37 and 38. I don't know if you can see that. Not really. Probably need to shade it a lot. But yeah, it shows up a little bit. 37, 38, so I'll get that to 37. And then we'll just torque it down. And the others, we'll make sure are in the same plane when we uh, install them. Okay, so the second rack is on. Uh, we're almost to 39 and eighth. I think I'll just leave it right there. It could be a little tire fit. And I'll adjust this angle, tighten those bolts. We'll do that for the rest of these. Okay, so there it is, we got them lined up you know all at approximately the same angle let's put some solar panels on and you'll notice we waited strategically until the end of the day to put the solar panels on because you don't want to do this in the middle of the day you might electrocute yourself <laughs> This is about as easy as panel insulation or module insulation gets. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a clip. It's a pretty strong little steel clip. And all you do is set it between the inside of the panel, the module frame, and the sun rack, and then you know toward the edge here. You tap it in. And there it is. My measurement was pretty good in spacing these, but I have a little bit of a gap up there on both sides. So I'm going to have to wiggle the panels to get them to fit right. But the other thing I noticed was I'm sure that the instructions must be incorrect as I thought, as I expected with these bolts. Because now that everything's on there, I can grab one of these, pan I can grab these panels and look at the movement. And that's all in the bracket down there that connects to the pipe. So I'm going to look up what the torque specs are uh, for this size of a grade 8 bolt. It looks like a 7 16th. I'm going to torque it to those specs because I think 24 pounds is way too little. Okay, so Robert looked up the, spec the torque specifications. And it looks like a 7 16th inch bolt, coarse thread, grade 8. 52 pounds, not 24. Uh, that's a Schedule 40 pipe. There should be no problem torquing onto that. So I'm going to retorque these to 52 pounds and see what it's like. 252. All right. So all this is torqued to 52 now. Let's see what we get. Pull on this and that's much better. It wiggles, but it doesn't move. It's 24 pounds on a bolt that size is not very much torque. And I thought so, and I said as much. So, I don't know, um, probably about an hour and a half. About an hour and a half, we were able to get the bracket on, this cross beam on, and four solar panels. It went together pretty well. Those clips are pretty strong. If that's all we need, that's kind of cool. So yeah. I like the way this goes together. I don't know. This yeah. thing will be blown over in five seconds. You reckon? <laughs> I don't know, it's, well. <clears throat> Sun rack, you hear that, there's your challenge. <laughs> well, I don't know. It, we're not win in winter time yet, but when the winds have been kind of strong, they've been out of the east. 
-hmm. So if it's a straight line or somewhat straight line out of the east, <clears throat> it should be okay because it'll just blow right over them. That's east. That's due east along right. this line. Okay, so if it comes due east, it'll just blow along the module, the panel, not uh, not against them. And then, of course, um, north, what are, what are we saying? Every direction of wind is strong. Yeah. But it seems that the east and the north have been stronger, really, I think, than mm -hmm. the south. Maybe not so much the southwest, but, I mean, if you ever look at a wind map, the arrows just go like this. Mm -hmm. so it's... <clears throat> like a hurricane, but really. No, it's <laughs> cyclonic, but it's not a hurricane. Um, okay, so the next steps would be, of course, to run three of these panels, uh, three of these modules, uh, to power the well. And one of them will power the Wi-Fi system in the green box. So that'll be up next, uh, would be wiring this, and then also putting our batteries and whatnot inside of our Wi-Fi box to get it ready for the um, the internet service provider to come out and install their stuff. So those are next steps. But fun project for today, don't you reckon? Oh, you're in shadow. Fun project for today, don't you reckon, Robert? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All done in one day for once. <laughs> <laughs>